So first thing I do before I'm doing anything else, I see I recognize this hyperbola. I can identify a squared and b squared very quickly, right? Because remember, hyperbolas is always a squared minus b squared for an ellipse or for a hyperbola, right? So I can say a squared is equal to 25. a equals 5. That's the distance from my center to my vertices. b squared equals 16. b equals 4, distance from my center to my uh, co-vertices. c squared equals a squared plus b squared, which in this case is going to be 41 again. Is this the same numbers? Oh, yeah, they are flipped, but it's basically the same number. Sorry about that. I actually didn't mean to do that. But anyway, c squared equals square root of 41. Uh, sorry. c squared equals 41. So c equals the square root of 41. However, we do notice this flip, though. So now you guys can see that my a squared is under my y, right? So when I go ahead, well, actually, first of all, we notice that my center is at negative 2, 3, right? Because remember, h is always with x, y is always with k. So let's go and graph our center here. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. There's my center. Now, since my transverse axis is now vertical, right, because a squared is under my y, so that means I have a vertical transverse axis. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that and label it as my transverse axis. And then that means this is my conjugate axis. All right, so what lies on your transverse axis? Your vertices and your foci. What lies on your conjugate axis? Your covertices. So let's go ahead and find our vertices. So here's my center. My vertices lie on my transverse axis, and they are a distance of a away. So a is 5. So I go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Vertice number 1, and then down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do you guys see how I'm doing my vertices up and down this time compared to left and right for the last equation? It's all based on what's under the x and what's under the y. Okay. Next thing is find the foci, which remember we said was between 6 and 7. So this was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'll say that's my foci. And then 5, 6, 7, that's my foci there. Okay. If I want to sketch my asymptotes here, uh, let's see, my asymptotes is going to be b, which is 4 away. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Covertice, 1, 2, 3, 4. Covertice. I'm going to use a different color if I have different colors. Any more colors? Here's red. There you go. So again, to sketch your covertices, just create a nice little box with your vertices. Okay. Then um, I can go ahead and cross my diagonals through the center. And now I just sketch my hyperbola through my vertice, or my vertex, or my vertices here, approaching my asymptotes. And there's my beautiful hyperbola. Yes? B. OK, now let's go ahead and label everything. So we have the center, uh, my foci. Let's find vertices. So from my center, negative through 3, my vertices are going up or down, right? So I'm basically taking negative 2, adding 4 to it. I'm sorry. Negative, I'm taking negative 2. I'm going up and down from 3. So I'm basically going up 3, or up 4, up 5 from 3, and down 5. So my vertices are negative 2, 8, and negative 2, negative 2. My foci is doing the same thing, but a distance of square root of 41. So I'm just going to say negative 2, comma 3, plus or minus square root of 41. I'm not going to break that apart. And then last but not least is the asymptotes, which for a asymptote for a, uh, um, for a hyperbola that has a vertical transverse axis, 
The equation looks like this, y equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h plus k. And again, guys, do we have enough information to write the equation here? Of course we do. We have a and b. a is 5, b is 4. x minus h, so therefore it's going to be x plus 2 plus 3. And there you go. That's it. Okay. Um, 